Great opportunity to talk about the Houston Dash. Dash in action at home Friday against Kansas City. New signing comes in a very, very big way. Ebony Salmon, she comes from uh, Louisville, and uh, we welcome her into the show. Ebony, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay, so can I officially say this is the best last name in the NWSL, Salmon? <laughs> I mean, it's for sure up there. Yeah, it's definitely a good one. All right, so how excited are you about the opportunity here in Houston uh, coming from Louisville? Yeah, you know, I'm really excited, obviously, coming from my first team in the NWSL, where this season I haven't been getting as minutes as many minutes as I'd hoped. I'm just really excited to get going with a new club, you know, a club with very good ambitions and just to see where that can take me in my career. Ebony Salmon coming, 21 years of age, an attacking player from Birmingham, England. You started in the Aston Villa Academy. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing in the game in England, because it may be different than the normal player, you know, that's American here in the United States with our system. Yeah, so before I went to the Aston Villa Academy, which was when I was 14, I just played boys football up until that point. And then I went into girls football in the Aston Villa Academy. And I was at Aston Villa, I think I was at their academy for two years. And then I made the step kind of, I was on the edge of the first team. And then I made the step into their first team where, where I played for one year before I made the move to Manchester United. So you go to Manchester United. How different is that from your prior club? Yeah, it was a lot different. And especially it being a new club, they obviously had big expectations around them with the size of the club. And it obviously didn't work out for me there as planned. But I think kind of how it did work out for me there has played a massive part in my career up until this point. So I'm going to say I think you have a, a, a large backbone, resili resiliency, um, because you've had a lot of success in your career as a 21-year-old. You've also had a lot of challenges. I have to think this is, this is a good thing for you in the future, having gone through these things, uh, responded to them, come back, found solutions, et cetera. Yeah, for sure makes it easier that I've kind of already been through similar situations in terms of kind of going to a club, having expectations, those expectations not being met and kind of having to move on maybe at a point where you didn't think you were going to have to. But yeah, I think like you said, I've obviously had that before and I think that only it kind of only makes me want to work harder and do better just to prove even more people wrong. Talking to Ebony Salmon uh, coming to the Houston Dynamo, eye-popping transfer, 190000 in allocation money, a lot of performance-based incentives in there uh, from Birmingham, England, certainly looking forward uh, to seeing, seeing you play. You know, what we were just talking about, is that a good message? Uh, well, I, I know it's a good mes message for for young soccer players that, that look, you know, there is disappointment in this game and that that is used to shape you and improve you. For sure. And I think obviously I experienced it at a very young age. And I think at the time I experienced it, I probably wish that I wasn't. But looking back, I think I, like it has helped me a lot. It's changed me a lot. And I think experiencing it very earlier on in your career can only help you when it happens later on in your career. And you know better how to deal with it and how to react. Okay, you leave, uh, you go to Bristol City, you're banging in a lot of goals there in the FA Women's Super League. Tell me a little bit about that and, and why you felt successful at that club. Was it the, the team put around you? Was it the style of play? Was it the manager? What helped produce all those goals? Yeah, I think obviously my move to Bristol City it was kind of the main thing for me was to get back play and get my confidence back and just enjoy the game again. And I think all of that happened at Bristol City. And I think, like you said, I mean, both seasons didn't go exactly how we wanted them to go. You know, we were in a relegation battle both seasons and we ended up getting relegated the second year. But I think for me on a personal note, it kind of did everything I needed after being released from Man United. I got my confidence back. I was playing again. I was scoring goals. And I think... That was probably the turning point again for me, how it had gone from bad, good to bad at Man United. It probably went back from bad to good at Bristol and it put me in a good position to make the move I did to the NWSL. Now, it's always an easy question for me to ask you to compare the NWSL to the FA Women's Super League. And I always think it's interesting to get the perspective from the international player. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the two leagues, the differences and, and maybe the pros and cons. Um, I think for me, the physical side of the game is a lot more physical here. It's also a lot more transitional games are a lot more end-to-end. -end. 
but I think that difference kind of has to forces you to bring out a different side of yourself which maybe you wouldn't have had to had to show in the WSL so I think the leagues I wouldn't say they're completely different but there are some differences but I think playing in both can only make you a better player because you experience both sides of the game. How big is the physical gap because that's 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 the exact answer that everybody gives. It's just more physical over here. And then you added on to it the other thing, the transitional nature of it. Those are the two very, very consistent answers we get. Take us a little deeper into that maybe and why. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't say it's a, a huge difference, but I think, I mean, this is just my opinion, but I think the reason for that difference is probably based on how the college system works in America and how athletes are trained from young to at whatever point they end up going pro. And obviously we don't have that system in England. So it's kind of, you go from grassroots to pro. So I think we don't have that in between where you're kind of built as an athlete. Now I was looking at a recent, uh, and it's very subjective, this thing talking about the 50 top women's players in the world, which is always very subjective. And we're in a world where lists come out every day about different things. Um, but uh, there weren't that many American players in that, that top 50 list. Is that, do you think due to the fact that just the rest of the world is catching on and the competition has increased tenfold? I mean, what do you think that is? Because we do know we have very talented players here in the U.S., but it, it seems that the rest of the world really is elevating its status now, and, and it really is becoming an even more global women's game. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, women's football is growing, and it's growing, it's growing at a good rate. Obviously, there's a long way to go. But I think, like you said, I think... in as well as what I just said about the college system in the US building people as athletes, we obviously don't have that over in Europe. And I think that kind of builds you more technically as a player, just going through the grassroots system and then going pro that way. And I think obviously these lists are based on complete opinion. And I think as the leagues grow, as women's football grow, there'll be more and more Americans on their list. They'll, that list will become more and more diverse as women's football continues to grow. I'm just curious, did you have opportunity to come play in the college system here? Because I would have thought that uh, somebody would have spotted you out and, and maybe made you a potential offer to come play in the college game. Yeah, I did. And it was really ironic, actually. I didn't realize this until maybe six months after being in the NWSL, but I realized it was actually UofL that reached out to me. And I was mm. considering I mean, to, when I was considering going to college in America and then I ended up playing for racing, which is really ironic. That's a pretty remarkable coincidence right there, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, 2022, you, you only played seven, 75 minutes so far, five sub appearances. You had six goals in 2021. Obviously, there's a, a ton of coaching changes. I don't think people realize sometimes that a coaching change can really dramatically change a player's trajectory on a team um if the person that brought you in all of a sudden is gone maybe you can take us into that a little bit because that's the life of a professional footballer yeah exactly like you said like it can have a massive change and a massive effect on certain individuals but i think like you said as well that is the life of a footballer and i think as a player you kind of have to deal with it you, you either you, you carry on working and you try and prove that person wrong try and change that coach's mind or if you get to a point where you feel like you can't do that you move on which is I, I feel like I did both I feel like I I gave it a chance I tried to change the coach's mind and that wasn't working so then I think for me it was time to move on and seek something new and of course the Houston Dash are miss, missing Rachel Daly they'll be missing Michelle Prince Maria Sanchez I mean it's obvious you're coming here to be instant impact is that an additional pressure for you or is that just something you're just super excited to embrace right now since you haven't been playing that much at Louisville I mean yeah exactly I think you, I think you got it perfectly there I'm obviously it adds a little bit of pressure coming into a new team and most probably having to go straight into straight into playing and performing and scoring goals and helping the team win and carrying on with the momentum that they've built over the past couple of games but I think as well, it's obviously really exciting for me to be coming from a club where I've hardly played all season to be coming into an environment where they're missing majority of their forward players. And I think that gives me a really good opportunity to kind of to show what I can do and show that show the coach that's here now, the coach that's coming in, show what show what I'm made of. 
When you look at the Houston Dash, what do you see from them as a team? Because in my opinion, um, you know, their last seven or eight games under Sarah Loudon, uh, it, it's been really interesting. It's been some of the best football they have played from an aesthetic standpoint, but also producing goals. And it just seemed different. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you'd have looked at them in the Challenge Cup, you would think it was a completely different team to what it is now. But, you know, it's the exact same players, just, I guess, with a different mentality and a winning mentality. And I think you can see that in their last, in their previous game, winning 4-3 against North Carolina. That was a huge result for them. And I think showing that they can do that as a team shows that they can beat anyone in this league. And I think we will take confidence from that win. And we know we've We've watched film on that. We know what we need to work on. I think going forward, we kind of just have to have that winner mentality, that fight, and then use use our ability, use the strengths of the players that we have to win games. We're talking to Ebony Salmon, a big signing for the Houston Dash. Really looking forward to seeing her play. Uh, likely debut Friday. I mean, have you gotten any indication that you're right in it on Friday? Um, no, I haven't actually. I mean, we've been training. I've been, I've had three sessions now so far, and I think, we're obviously just working back as a team to get back into it because everyone had a few days off after that, that last game. So just getting back into it, getting back into the swing of things, but obviously full focus is on Friday. Ebony, this is always a fun question. Describe yourself as a player to the listeners. Your strengths, the uh, things uh, that, that they can expect to see from you when you're uh, at PNC Stadium. Yeah, like you said, I'm an attacking player and I think I'm really direct to go forward. I think my pace is one of my biggest attributes, so being really direct and being fast in that. And then I just think one of my main things that I focus on is being clinical in front of goal. So trying to just score as many goals as I can, get as many assists as I can and just help the team win games. I think people will like that answer. How about your your, your family? Is it a footballing family? Was your dad a footballer, a football fan? Yeah, all my family has grown up around football and I think that's honestly one of the main reasons why I started playing at such a young age and probably one of the reasons why I'm where I am today because I started off so young. You know, that was kind of a loaded question, right? Yeah. You'd already, you'd already told me that you played a lot of football with the boys growing up and that's a similar thing that Rachel Daly did. Is that is that something that happens very, very often in England still now? I mean, are, are, are young female footballers still playing with the guys or are they finding their own, you know, sort of teams and leagues? Um, it happens less often now because there is more, there's more and more access to girls teams, young girls teams, whereas when I was growing up and I'm sure when Rachel was growing up, there wasn't really that many girls teams to be a part of. So if you wanted to play from young, if you wanted to play competitive football from a young age, you had to kind of play with the boys. So are you a Birmingham City fan? I mean, Rachel's pretty obvious. She wears Leeds United on her on her sleeve. Are, are you a Birmingham yeah. City fan? Where are you? I support Man United. Oh, okay, good. Well, that's good. There's a Man United Supporters Club here in Houston. So they may be coming out to see you or they may be asking you for an invite to come watch a game with them when the season starts again. So how <laughs> do you feel about where Manchester United is right now on the men's side? I mean, yeah. They're not in a good place. We don't like to talk about that. Okay. Well, we won't, we won't talk about, but they got Ten Hag now, right? Maybe things are going to look yeah. up a little bit. The only way is up. Yeah. You got you to gotta stay positive. Uh, we can get back to the glory days, right? Um, Ebony Salmon joining us here. Well, listen, thank you so much uh, for coming on. I know it's been kind of a whirlwind for you. You're getting settled in Houston. Uh, there's a game Friday. We could potentially see you get your debut there. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you play, and I thank you very much for giving us uh, some time here. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ebony. That's Ebony Salmon. That's how we wrap it up tonight. Houston Dash. Hey, right now, by the way.